Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey, and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. Today, I'm going to be sharing a t-shirt pattern. This is a pattern that I sell in my shop called the Comfy Tee, and it comes as a set. So it's a t-shirt and a pair of elastic waist pants called the Comfy Lounge Set. So we're basically gonna be using this t-shirt pattern like a knit sloper. And a sloper is just a sort of technical garment that is custom to your body measurements, and you can use it to start to build new patterns. If you find a t-shirt pattern that you really love and it fits you really great, even if you copy one that you have in your own closet, then that can act as a perfectly good sloper as well. So the first part is gonna be just the basic sew along for this t-shirt pattern. And I'll be sharing some of my basic techniques for sewing with knits. Um, I will be doing this on the serger, but you don't have to have a serger for this project. You could also use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine. The second project I'm gonna be sharing is just a basic tank top. So I'm gonna be leaving off the sleeves and then trimming the shoulders of this T pattern so that you can make a really simple tank top. I'll also be showing you an alternate method for creating the binding for the tank top. So that'll be another technique that I'll go over. The third type of t-shirt that I'm gonna show you is a square neckline t-shirt. Like Pinterest has been serving me these t-shirts for like a year and I finally made myself one and I wore it all summer long. It's been my favorite, favorite t-shirt and I can't wait to make more with long sleeves. So I picked up this technique from what Bella made on Instagram and I'll share a link to her story. She has a saved story that shows how she did this, this technique. And I think she picked it up from somebody else as well. So she talks about that in her story too. Yeah, it's a great technique for sewing this. It's a lined t-shirt and it's a really clean edge on the neckline. You don't have to do any binding for this, which I really love. All right, let's get started. I'm starting with the basic fitted tee. This is just the comfy tee pattern as it comes. And I like to fold my fabric as I go so that I can utilize the fabric in the most efficient way. I'm gonna be using my rotary cutter to cut the pattern out, which is my preferred method for cutting out all of my patterns, but especially for knits because it helps keep things from shifting too much while you're cutting. I'm also making sure to cut all of my notches where indicated on the pattern. This is just gonna make sure that everything matches up properly and help me align the pattern pieces. I'm starting with the back bodice here, and then I'll do the same thing for the front bodice pattern piece. This pattern comes with two neckline options, a crew neck and a scoop neck. For this project, I'm going to be cutting out the crew neck. This pattern also comes with cup size options, so as a B cup, a C cup, and a D cup. And for the C and D cup, there's a little bit of extra curvature at the side seam here with a notch that helps you ease that into the back side seam. And that's just gonna add a little extra space at the bust for those larger cup sizes. And again, I'm making sure to mark all of my notches where indicated on the pattern to help me line everything up. There's also an option for a long or short sleeve for this pattern. I'm gonna be doing the short sleeve and I'm cutting two pieces mirrored and also making sure to cut my notches. And last but not least, I'm cutting out the binding for the neckline, which also has notches to help align it with the neckline on the bodice. Next, I'm aligning the back bodice with the front bodice, right sides together, and I'm going to sew these at the shoulder seams. So I'm just pinning this in place first before I take it over to the serger. And the seam allowance for this pattern is 3 8 inch or one centimeter. So I'm just trimming a little bit off as I go. And you don't have to use a serger for this project like I mentioned before, but you do wanna use either a zigzag stitch or some other type of stretch stitch since we're working with knit fabric. As a side note, while I was traveling, I picked up this little folding ironing pad and this mini iron and this is a Dritz Mighty Steam Iron, and it is the best little iron. I friggin' love it. Anyway, now that we have the shoulder seam sewn, we can press the seams toward the back bodice, and this is just gonna help everything lay nice and flat and make sewing the sleeves on a little bit easier. And I always recommend pressing your seams as recommended in a pattern. It really does help make your workflow a little bit better. So now we can attach the sleeve, and we're gonna use the notches on the sleeve to align the sleeve cap with the shoulder seam. There are two notches on the back of the sleeve cap that align with the back bodice, and then there's a single notch on the front to align with the front bodice. So we're gonna align that and pin that in place all along the sleeve cap in the arm side, and I'm gonna sew this the 3 8 inch seam allowance again on my serger and I'm going slow here I'm kind of taking the pins out as I go taking my time making sure there's no bunches or gathers in the sleeve and kind of stretching things and easing things into place as I go and knit sleeves usually don't have a lot of extra ease in the sleeve cap for woven sleeves you often have to kind of ease it in and there's a little bit extra there for kind of making the sleeve cap curve but since we're working with a stretchier fabric we don't really need to do that and it should align pretty evenly with the arm side so I did this for both of the sleeves. And then I used my little mighty steam iron to 
pressed the seam allowance toward the bodice and then I also went ahead and pre-pressed the hem into the sleeve and the bottom of the bodice. This is just gonna make things a little easier for me once I get the bodice sewn together. Next, I'm going to align the bodice front and back right sides together again. I'm unfolding that pre-pressed hem in the bottom of the bodice and in the sleeve and pinning everything together and I will sew this from the sleeve all the way down to the bottom of the bodice with one stitch. And I've done this for both sides of the bodice. Then I'm gonna turn this right side out and we're going to attach the neck binding. So I've got my neck binding piece here. I'm just gonna fold this in half and press that fold in place. And I've cut this piece so that the direction of stretch is in the horizontal direction. This is gonna help us align and stretch that neckline binding around the neckline. So I'm gonna unfold this now and fold it in the opposite direction, right sides together and sew the ends together. Once I've got that sewn, I just want to clip the very center here so that I can flip those seam allowances in opposite directions when I fold this back on itself in the lengthwise direction. And since I pre-pressed that, it just makes it a little bit easier to fold this in place once I get it sewn into a loop like this. And I'll hit it with my iron one more time just to make sure everything is nice and flat. And now I can align it with my neckline. So the seam on the back is going to align with the notch on the back of the neckline. And I wanna put these right sides together so I'm doing this on the exterior of the bodice and I'll use the notches that are on the neckline and on the binding to align everything together. And I'm pinning this in place. I'm using a lot of pins and I'm kind of stretching this into place as well. So the neckline binding is a little bit smaller than the neckline and that's gonna help the neckline binding lay flat once it's sewn on. So I'll take this over to the serger and sew it around the entire perimeter of the neckline. And I'm kind of stretching this and easing this into place as I go, because like I said, that neckline binding is a little bit shorter. So I need to stretch it as I sew. And once that's sewn on, you can see that it lays pretty flat. I'm just gonna use my iron to press that seam allowance toward the bodice. And then I'll take this over to my regular sewing machine and sew the seam allowance down to the bodice and also do the hem on the sleeves and the bodice. And again, since I have that pre-pressed, it makes it just a little bit easier since this is all kind of sewn together now, it makes it easier to get that hem pressed in there. So you can use a stretch double needle for this, a twin needle, but I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna go really easy and use a stretch needle and a zigzag stitch to attach the bindings to the bodice. So I'm doing this from the right side. I've got that seam allowance pressed toward the bodice again, and I'm top stitching this with a zigzag stitch set on about two and a half millimeters wide and a stitch length of about also two and a half millimeters. I like to kind of match the stitch length and the width whenever I'm doing a zigzag stitch. So I'm just top stitching that seam allowance down to the bodice side of this binding. And again, I'm kind of stretching that gently as I sew. And I'm taking my time too, to make sure that the top stitching looks really nice and neat. And you can use a twin needle for this step, but I think the zigzag stitch looks fine. You can see how that looks up close. And that's just gonna help everything lay nice and flat. So I'm doing the same thing to stitch the hem of the sleeve and the bodice with a zigzag stitch. And I've done this with about a 5 8 inch hem on the sleeve and the bodice. And because the knit fabric does not fray, um, you really don't have to worry about folding this under twice. You could fold it under twice, but it might be a little bit bulky. So I usually just fold mine under once. If you have a cover stitch machine, you can also get a little bit neater finish. So you can see how that looks on the bodice too. And I've sewn right along the edge of that cut edge. And our basic tee is finished. And we can move on to the basic tank hack. So for this tank pattern, I really was feeling kind of lazy. I didn't want to have to draft a new pattern. So I just folded the edges of the shoulder seam and kind of made it taper back to be tangent with the curve of the arm side. And I really probably should have curved this just a little bit more, but this actually worked out okay. Um, and then I also made sure that the shoulder seams matched at the top and that it matched up at the side seam here. So I've cut out my pieces. I've got a front bodice here and a back bodice. And I've got three binding strips here. So I've got one for the neckline and two for the armhole. And to get the length of the armholes, I just measured the armholes minus the seam allowance and multiply that by 0.9 so that the bindings for the armholes are about 90% of the length of the armholes. And this is gonna help everything lay flat because you always want your bindings on knits to be a little bit shorter. 
So I'm attaching the front and back bodice again at the shoulder seams. I've got that surged. And then now I can attach the binding to the neckline. So for this binding, I'm doing a wrapped binding. And so it's a little bit different technique. I'm folding a 3 8 inch seam allowance in each side of the long side of the binding. So I'll do that on both sides. Then I'm going to fold this in half so that the folded edges align. Now I want to open up my bodice again and press those seam allowances toward the back bodice, just like I did on the regular t-shirt pattern. I'll also flip this over and iron it again from the right side just to make sure that that's nice and pressed flat. And I also noticed that I forgot to mark a notch on my back bodice at the neckline. So I'm just folding this in half just to get that center point and I'm gonna mark the notches there for the back of the bodice. Now I'm going to unfold my binding and I'll be using those folds as a guide for my seam allowance. And I just want to fold this back in half, right sides together in the opposite direction and sew that together. And again, I'm clipping that seam allowance just like I did for the other neckline binding so that I can flip those seam allowances in the opposite directions. So with the neckline binding opened up again, I'm aligning the center back of the bodice with that center back seam of the neckline binding. And I'm gonna align that all the way around the same way I did for the t-shirt, except this time the binding is opened. And so when I finish, you can see here, it kind of looks like a turtleneck. This time I'm also pressing the seam allowance, but I'm pressing it toward the binding instead of toward the bodice because it's gonna be concealed in the binding. So I'll fold that binding back over so that the interior fold overlaps the seam allowance and hides the seam allowance. I'm gonna pin that in place. So I'll do this all the way around the neckline binding, aligning it all so that the folded binding conceals the seam allowance of the bodice and the neckline binding. And you can see that up close. I've got that fold right along the edge there. And I used a lot of pins here to make sure that it's all nice and neat. And I'll top stitch that all the way around with a zigzag stitch on the binding side. So I've got the binding attached on the interior and the exterior here and the seam allowance is concealed. And then I'm just gonna use my iron to kind of press everything into place. Sometimes when you're sewing these things, the knit fabric can stretch a little bit, but if you use your iron to kind of add some heat, it, it helps to shrink that back into place. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the armholes and I've folded my binding and pressed it. And for this one, I actually don't need to connect the binding at the ends, but I do wanna mark the center of the binding. So I've just folded it in half and I'm putting two little clips in the edge of the binding there. So I'm gonna open that up again and I'll first align the ends where the armhole meets the side seam. And then I'm gonna use that little center notch to align with the shoulder seam. And again, this is gonna be a little bit shorter than the armhole opening, but it's gonna help kind of pull that armhole together and keep it in place and lay nice and flat. So I've done the center and then I'll pin the other side seam and then I'll go in between kind of stretching the binding into place and putting pins to make sure that it all stays in place when I sew this on the serger. And sometimes it takes a little time to get it stretched in just the right spot. But I just wanna make sure that this is evenly distributed along that entire armhole. So I'll take this over to the serger and sew that with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I've done this here on both sides of the arm opening. So now I'm gonna fold this right sides together and with the armhole binding unfolded again, same way we did for the t-shirt hems, I'm going to sew the side seams together, right sides together um, all along the whole side. And I'm making sure that my seam allowances are pressed toward the binding again. So once I get that pinned, I can sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance on the serger. And I've done that for both sides here. It's also a good idea to try on the tank top at this point to make sure that you like the way that the bodice fits at the bust and under the arms because sometimes you may need to trim it a little bit more and you wanna do this before you sew the binding closed. Now I can turn this right side out and fold the binding into place the same way I did for the neckline and finish top stitching that on the armholes. Once the binding was complete, I just used my iron to sort of, again, press this and, and shrink some of that fabric back into place in case it got stretched out when I was sewing it. The last thing I need to do is hem this, and I actually ended up hemming this a little bit more cropped, but it is done. Next up is the square neckline hack. 
And for this one, I cut the back bodice just as it is on the pattern piece. But for the front bodice, I cut a square neckline out of the pattern piece. So I just measured straight down from the shoulder seam where it meets the neckline, seven and a half inches. And then I measured across from the center front to that line, three and three quarter inches. Since this piece is fully lined, I cut the exact pattern pieces for the bodice out of a lining fabric. And for my shell, I'm using a ribbed fabric. And for the lining, I'm just using a non-ribbed stretch fabric. And again, I'm pressing my seam allowances for the shell. I press the seam allowances toward the back bodice. And for the lining, I'm pressing the seam allowances toward the front bodice. Because when I match these pieces up, that will help the seam allowances nest next to each other and reduce the bulk. So once I get those pressed, I've got the exterior bodice laying face up, and then I'm gonna align the lining face down um, and make sure that I pin those shoulder seams together. And you can see I've got those seams nested so that they're going in different directions. Then I'm gonna pin around the entire neckline to align those edges. And I'm gonna take this over to the serger and sew those together all the way around the perimeter. So, I'm not trimming a lot off when I sew these together. And when I get to the corner, I wanna make a nice clean corner. So I'm going really slow. And as I take that under the needle and under next to the blade, I'm just kind of stretching this and trying to get it as straight as possible around that corner and really taking my time there. So you can see I'm at the next corner here. I'm doing the same thing. I'm getting as close as I can to that to try to prevent any gaps in the sewing and getting that corner right up to the blade on the serger as I pull that through. Once I have that sewn together, just the neckline, I'm going to turn this right side out so that that seam is concealed between the two layers. And I want to understitch the seam allowance to the lining side of this assembly. To do this, I need to pull the lining away from the shell and press the seam allowance toward the lining. I'll do this around the entire perimeter of the neckline. Then I'll take this over to the sewing machine and understitch that seam allowance to the lining with a zigzag stitch. And I'm getting right up against the edge of that seam here and taking my time and making sure that that seam stays pressed toward the lining side. And you can see how that looks up close there. And I also didn't show this part, but after I tried on this shirt, I ended up adding a little strip of elastic to this bottom edge of the neckline here just to help stabilize that and keep it from stretching out. So I did that with the understitching on that part of the neckline. Now the lining and the shell are going to act as a single layer. So we're gonna sew the rest of this t-shirt as we normally would as if this was a single layer. So I've attached the sleeve just the same way I did for the regular t-shirt and sewn the side seam from the sleeve to the hem the same way I did for the first t-shirt. Now I can hem the sleeves and the bottom of the bodice. And I ended up actually doing a cropped version on this one so that I could wear it with high-waisted pants. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And yeah, if you'd like to pick up the Comfy Tea pattern, it is linked in my description below this video. If you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more from me, be sure to hit subscribe and that way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. So if you're ready, let's just jump right into the... La, la, la. Okay, so if you're ready, let's just get right into the... All right, let's get into the tutor tutorial. All right, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, that's gonna have to do. <laughs>